So our fourth speaker will be presenting an article that is uh, simultaneously appearing in JAMA on the effect of intravenous interferon beta-1A on death and days free from mechanical ventilation among patients with a moderate to severe ARDS, a randomized clinical trial, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Bellingham. Uh, thanks very much. I'm delighted to be here. And as you heard, presenting the results of the interest trial, which is a multi-center study of interferon uh, impact in moderate or severe ARDS. Disclosures, uh, the trial was funded significantly by a major grant from the EU, and um, it was also the study sponsor was Farron Pharmaceuticals. Uh, myself and Mark Ranieri were the two uh, PIs, and you can see the steering committee there uh, representing each of the uh, eight EU countries. EU because Britain was part of the EU at that stage. Um, so the background story is that in the muscles, ATP is fundamental, it makes muscles work, but in the extracellular fluid, ATP is pro-inflammatory. The body knows that and tries to get rid of it by dephosphorylating the ATP down to adenosine, which is anti-inflammatory. And it does that through the action of two enzymes, CD39, which is constitutive, and CD73, which is uh, expression is increased by the action of uh, interferon, and it can be shed. So here we have the normal body situation with lots of CD73 uh, expressed, lots of adenosine being made anti-inflammatory, and that keeps uh, a non-inflammatory uh, environment, and we believe uh, contributes to lack of lung leak. Uh, and interferon is one of the agents endogenously or exogenously that helps protect that position. In the inflamed situation, uh, CD73 is shed, and in the absence of CD73, you have no adenosine, uh, lots of ATP in extracellular fluid, and we believe that to be part and parcel of the lung leak you see in ARDS. So uh, ARDS shedding a CD73, and no current treatment for that. We undertook a phase one, two trial across uh, a number of centers in the UK, and quite a remarkable outcome, which was really a dose finding and safety study, where we found a mortality of 8% in the interferon beta treated patients and 32% uh, in our control group. Uh, this was published in Lancet and led to uh, the workup for our phase three interest study. The design of the study was a double blind placebo randomized control study across eight countries in Europe. Uh, 47 sites. Uh, we wanted to get the drug in early, within 48 hours, which is when we thought the lung leak was paramount, because later you get all the inflammatory and cell destructive processes that we didn't think this was necessarily going to be part of. Primary endpoint was a combined composite of survival and ventilator-free days at day 28, and multiple logical secondary endpoints, mortality uh, 28, 60, 90, et cetera. Safety being studied, and you can see the powering of the study there. To be sure that we had ARDS, we uh, used two medical monitors who are on call 24 seven, so huge thanks to the two of them, Nicola and Peter. Uh, and any site wanting to recruit a patient had to match the X-ray from their patient with one of a number of X-rays provided by the medical monitor, only some of which had ARDS. And that helped us focus down on ARDS in the population and recruiting the right patients. As you heard, we're very proud that our study is being published in JAMA today, and I'm gonna present the results here. Uh, the consort diagram, we obviously uh, screened a large number of patients with ARDS and a significant number were excluded. The majority of exclusions were patients with ARDS diagnosed more than 48 hours before. A number with ECMO and an, another group who had ex significant exclusion factors, home ventilation, uh, severe heart failure, et cetera. We got down to uh, a number here, 301, who were randomized, and you can see equal randomization then into the two groups and the number here that we were able to assess out at 90 days. The demographics, 
I don't want to spend too long here, very similar between the interferon-treated and the placebo-treated group. You can see that they, pneumonia was the most common cause of ARDS, sepsis uh, the second most common cause. The patients were reasonably sick with a significant Apache score, SOFA score, and the number with severe ARDS similar in the two groups. It was worth noting that the number on corticosteroids at the onset of the study was quite significant uh, with about 31 and nearly 40% in those two groups. It was a safety study as well as an outcome study. And the safety groups between placebo and interferon for the most common treatment of emergent adverse events, no significant difference. I note the slight increase in pyrexia here. That's what you would expect with uh, interferon beta being administered. And it's just worth keeping an eye on rhabdomyolysis, whether this five was a random uh, chance event or not, we'll need to keep a watch on. Otherwise, no obvious difference in terms of most common safety events. And similarly, no obvious difference in terms of serious safety adverse events. If you give interferon, how do you know it's doing anything? People don't go blue and turn pink with spots or whatever, but you can measure a biomarker, and MXA is the best biomarker, and you can see MXA increasing and peaking here at the end of our six-day uh, treatment course uh, compared to our placebo. So we were comfortable that the interferon was working. We were measuring CD73, recognizing that this is soluble CD73, so we don't know what's happening in the lung, and we saw an increase in soluble CD73 in our interferon-treated patients, but there was a similar increase in our placebo-treated group. So whether this meant there was an endogenous interferon or other reasons for shedding, uh, including just the major injury, we have yet to find out. 28-day mortality, no difference between either the interferon or the placebo-treated group. It's worth noting a relatively low mortality with both groups. When you look out at 360 days, again, no difference in the mortality between the two groups. They were remarkably consistent over that time. And when you look at ventilator-free days, again, no real difference in ventilator-free days between the two groups. We were interested in the impact of the corticosteroids. We had far more corticosteroids being uh, administered to our patient group than in our Lancet uh, respiratory paper. And we did retrospective analysis of the impact of corticosteroids on the outcome. And we noted that glucocorticoids at baseline tended to favor the placebo group versus glucocortic no glucocorticoids at baseline, possibly a slight impact favoring interferon. We've done further analysis on that, and that will be subject of a subsequent paper which would be of real interest. So in conclusion, we can say that for moderate or severe ARDS, inter intravenous interferon beta for six days compared with placebo resulted in no significant difference in the composite score of death and number of ventilator-free days over 28 days, and nor did it in any other of our significant secondary uh, outcomes. There were no major safety concerns with the use of interferon beta, the results, therefore, do not support the use of interferon beta in the management of ARDS. We have to say that that's where there's part of an SOP that includes the use of steroids. Concomitant use of glucocorticoids may have interacted with, with results. Glucocorticoids used, uh, use was associated with mortality both in interferon and the placebo group when adjusted for Apache. And Therefore, we think further studies may be warranted for interferon beta as a treatment for ARDS without concomitant use of glucocorticoids. And I make that point because care is needed in the treatment of clinical conditions associated with interferon beta activation. So if you consider viral-induced ARDS as is happening right now, your own body is producing significant interferon beta and the use of glucocorticoids uh, is not recommended there by the WHO, and I think we should be considering that as a different group of ARDS versus uh, non-viral, non-interferon endogenous production, and that may need further look at. I'd like to acknowledge a large number of uh, study sites and a very large number of workers on what was a fascinating study to do, and I thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you very much.
so we have time for a question. Any explanation for the relatively low mortality in your group, in both uh, groups? I'd love to know. We opened up the, um, the well, we, we tried to keep our exclusions very, very limited. We were allowed all forms of cancer. We had hematological malignancies. We did exclude liver disorder. We did exclude uh, people on with significant lung, uh, pre-existing lung injury, but nothing very different to other studies. So we don't really know why the mortality was so much lower and lower than our uh, baseline Lancet study.